Hi friends, welcome to my video. In this video, we are going to see the cultural characteristics of Staphylococcus aureus. Staphylococcus aureus or non-motile, non-sporing, catalase positive, coagulase positive, gram positive cocci. Some strains are capsulated and some strains are non-capsulated. Let's see why we are calling it as a non-motile. Bacterial motility is the ability of bacteria to move independently. The bacterial flagellum is an organelle responsible for motility. Staphylococcus aureus does not have flagella. So we are calling it as a non-motile bacteria. Next, why we are calling it as a non-sporing bacteria means Staphylococcus aureus do not produce endospores. Some bacteria can produce small oval or spherical dormant structures called spores that are very resistant to high temperatures, radiations, desiccation and chemical agents. Next one is catalase positive. Gram-positive cocci are often isolated from clinical samples. The catalase test is a particularly important test used to determine whether the gram-positive cocci is a staphylococci or a streptococci. Staphylococcus and micrococcus species are catalase positive. Streptococcus and enterococcus species are catalase negative. Next, we are going to say the importance of coagulase test. The ability to clot blood by producing coagulase distinguishes the virulent pathogen Staphylococcus aureus from the less virulent coagulase negative Staphylococcal species such as Staphylococcus epidermidis, Staphylococcus saprophyticus, and Staphylococcus lugdunensis. Staphylococcus aureus stain purple by gram stain and it is in spherical shape. So we are calling it is a gram positive cocci. Next we are going to see various Staphylococcus aureus commonly found. Staphylococcus aureus is commonly found in the nasopharynx on normal skin and in the intestines. Staphylococcus aureus is an important pathogen of clinical significance causing variety of diseases in humans. Staphylococcus aureus causes superficial skin infections to life-threatening diseases such as endocarditis, sepsis, respiratory tract infection, urinary tract infection, bloodstream infections, osteomyelitis, and toxin-mediated staphylococcal diseases, which include toxic shock syndrome, staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome, and staphylococcal food poisoning. Next, we are going to say the growth requirements or conditions required for growth. Under growth requirements, we are going to say about temperature, pH, oxygen and also about salt tolerance. Temperature Staphylococcus aureus grow within a temperature range of 10 to 42 degrees Celsius. The optimum being 37 degrees Celsius. pH The pH range is 7.4 to 7.6. Oxygen requirement They are aerobes and facultative anaerobes. That is, they can grow under conditions with or without oxygen. Next one is salt tolerance. Staphylococcus aureus can tolerate high salt concentration. That is, can tolerate 7.5% sodium chloride concentration. This concentration inhibits the growth of most bacteria. Up to this, we learned the morphology and the growth requirements of Staphylococcus aureus. Next, we are going to see the various culture media for Staphylococcus aureus. 
Staphylococcus aureus has no special requirements for growth. That means it is a non-fastidious organism and can readily grow on ordinary culture media. Various culture media for Staphylococcus aureus. Solid media. Nutrient agar, blood agar, McConkey agar, mannitol salt agar, milk salt agar, ludlum's medium, Bayparker agar, etc. Liquid medium, nutrient broth medium, peptone water and salt broth. Nutrient agar, on nutrient agar, after incubation for 24 hours, the colonies are large, circular, convex, smooth, shiny, opaque and in golden yellow color. Staphylococcus aureus produces the yellow pigment called staphyloxanthi, a carotenoid pigment which is responsible for the characteristic golden yellow color of the colonies. The pigment does not diffuse into the medium. Pigment production occurs optimally at 22 degrees Celsius and only in aerobic cultures. Pigment production is enhanced when 1% glycerol monoacetate or milk is incorporated in the medium. Here we should remember one important point. The term aureus is derived from Latin which refers to the color of gold. The name Staphylococcus is derived from Greek. Staphyl meaning a bunch of grapes. Cocos meaning a berry. Staphylococcus aureus characteristic gold colored colonies are also formed on triptych soy agar, brain art infusion agar, and luria butterni agar and on nutrient agar slope it forms a characteristic oil paint appearance next one is blood agar colonies on blood agar are similar to those on nutrient agar and produce beta type of hemolysis a clear zone is formed around the colonies that is a complete hemolysis. Let's see what is hemolysis. Blood agar is a solid growth medium that contains red blood cells. This medium is used to detect bacteria that produce substances to break apart the red blood cells. This process that is the breakdown of red blood cells is termed hemolysis. Lysis of red blood cells. The degree to which the blood cells are hemolyzed is used to distinguish bacteria from one another. A substance that causes hemolysis is a hemolysin. Hemolysins are lipids and proteins that cause lysis of red blood cells by disrupting the cell membrane. These hemolysins radially diffuse outwards from the colonies, causing complete or partial destruction of the red cells in the medium and complete denaturation of hemoglobin within the cells to colorless products. Here, the most important thing to be noted is that the virulence of Staphylococcus aureus is closely associated with a variety of secreted enzymes and toxins produced by the bacteria. Hemolysin is an exotoxin. After this, we learned what is hemolysis and hemolysins. Next, we are going to see what is beta hemolysis? Beta hemolysis is complete lysis of red blood cells, resulting in a distinct, clear, colorless zones surrounding and under the colony. Let's see why does Staphylococcus aureus 
produce hemolysin that destroys red blood cells. Staphylococcus aureus is a pathogenic bacterium that requires iron to carry out vital metabolic functions and cause disease. The most abundant reservoir of iron inside the human host is heme, which is the cofactor of hemoglobin. Staphylococcus aureus extract and import heme from hemoglobin and liberate iron from heme in the bacterial cytoplasm. The most important thing to be noted is that for primary isolation, sheep blood agar is recommended. Human blood should not be used as it may contain antibodies or other inhibitors. Next one is McConkie agar. Staphylococcus aureus grow on McConkie's medium, producing smaller colonies that are pink due to lactose fermentation. McConkie agar is a selective and differentiating agar that only grows gram-negative bacterial species. Key components of the McConkie agar include crystal violet dye, bile salt, lactose and neutral red. McConkie agar can differentiate gram-negative organisms based on their lactose metabolism. The fermentation of lactose produces organic acids which decreases the pH of the agar. McConkie agar contains a pH indicator that turns pink under acidic conditions. Lactose fermenters will form pink colonies and non-lactose fermenters will form off-white opaque colonies. Crystal violet dye and bile salts prevent the growth of gram-positive bacteria. If crystal violet is not added to the Mekonki agar, then it will support the growth of Staphylococcus aureus. Staphylococcus aureus grow on Mekonki agar, producing smaller colonies that are pink due to lactose fermentation. Next one is Manitol salt agar. We are going to see the colony morphology of Staphylococcus aureus on mannitol salt agar. Staphylococcus aureus form pigmented colonies surrounded by a yellow aloe due to the fermentation of mannitol. Non-pathogenic staphylococci usually form small red colonies which do not change the color of the medium. Here we should note one important point that is change in the color of the medium demonstrates the fermentation of mannitol not the color of the colony because micrococci are pigmented. Mannitol salt agar is both selective and differential agar medium. At first we are going to see mannitol salt agar as a selective medium. As the name indicates, mannitol salt agar contains 7.5% of sodium chloride. We should remember one important point here that is most media contain only 0.5% sodium chloride. Staphylococci species can tolerate 7.5% sodium chloride concentration but other pathogenic bacteria may not. This concentration inhibits the growth of most bacteria. Thus, mannitol salt agar selectively isolates Staphylococcus species. Next, we are going to see mannitol salt agar as a differentiation medium. Mannitol salt agar contains the sugar mannitol and the pH indicator phenol red. Let's see about mannitol. Mannitol is the only sugar in the mannitol salt agar. Mannitol is usually fermented anaerobically by Staphylococcus aureus but not by other species. Staphylococcus aureus 
ferment mannitol producing acid but no gas next we are going to see about phenol red the phenol red is the ph indicator the color of phenol red at neutral ph is red fermentation of mannitol produces acids which decreases the ph of the agar which in turn changes the color of phenol red to yellow that is at ph levels below 6.9 the medium is a yellow color you should note one point here that is in the neutral ph the color of phenol red is red and above ph 8.4 the color of phenol red is pink thus we learned why we are calling mannitol salt agar as both selective and differential agar medium next we are going to say about milk salt agar milk salt agar is used for selective isolation and cultivation of staphylococci next we are going to say about ludlum's medium telluride glycine agar was originally developed by ludlum and modified by zibovitz et al it is used for the quantitative detection of coagulase positive staphylococci from foods and other sources like skin mucous membranes air soil etc this medium support better growth of coagulase positive cocci even if present in small numbers lithium chloride and potassium telluride are the inhibitors of the coagulase negative staphylococci and a wide variety of other bacteria potassium telluride also serve as a differential agent staphylococcus aureus can reduce telluride and form black colonies bait parker agar bait parker agar is used for the selective isolation of staphylococci species bait parker developed the saga medium from the telluride glycine formulation of zibovitz et al finally we are going to say about liquid medium uniform turbidity is produced I'm concluding this video here and see you soon in my next video. Thank you for watching.